analog clock. Boom, it's like a Bentley. So in this video, I'm gonna show you why I bought the worst car possibly ever, or at least in the 2000s, and how I sold this car for a $2,000 profit. And what is this beautiful car? It is the Chrysler PT Cruiser. At the end of this video, I'll also share three simple tips and tricks they can help you do this as well, things to look out for if you're going to purchase and try and flip your own car. So here's the story. I was searching for a car that would be a good flip. I was looking for low miles, maybe one or two owners, something that would be easy to clean up, not a ton of body damage. I didn't wanna be like fixing this thing in my driveway for weeks on end. And out of all possible things I could have ever, ever found, it was a damn PT Cruiser. My knowledge of the PT Cruiser is arguably this being one of the worst cars to come out in the 2000s right alongside the Kia Rio, the Hummer H2, and different vehicles like that. I was browsing for used cars, and I just happened to come across this deal, and it was too good for me to pass up. The reason being is I found a couple of things on this car. Number one, it had a handicap license plate frame. This was a good sign to me that it was probably owned by someone who didn't drive much or was handicapped, and therefore they probably weren't like a race car driver, and they're probably treating the car somewhat respectably. Number two, it had about two years of expired registration. This deters a lot of past buyers, but for me it was no problem. I was able to go on the DMV's website in California and calculate exactly how much it would be to register the vehicle, and therefore I just baked that into the future profit margin of what I would have to buy this car for. This PT Cruiser as well was extremely low miles, it was 87,000 miles which at the time was about the lowest mileage I could find uh, on used cars at auctions and different sources like that. And also to my experience, almost anything under 100K sells really easily and usually sells for like $5,000 or so, even if it's a piece of junk or a car no one wants like a Saturn or something like that, because people just want low mileage cars and they figure, hey, I'll throw a few bucks at this and even if it breaks down in two years, it's probably worth my couple of grand. The last reason I bought it is the car was poorly merchandised. So it only had like four photos of it. I think it was like one of the front, one of the back, the interior and the engine. So you don't really know too much if it ran very well. There weren't like undercarriage shots. There were some risk in this, but it wasn't merchandised well. There was some trash on it, some broken stuff. It was dusty. They just didn't put the work into it. But there were a few little spots on the images where I could see that it was probably a clean car with little to no body damage or anything like that and probably didn't need a lot of work to refurbish and then ultimately resell. Also, this car was far away in the suburbs of San Diego. It wasn't in a downtown metro like San Diego, LA, San Francisco, New York City, something like that. So it took a little bit of a drive, like 45 minutes out. So despite the car being far from where I lived, I ultimately started bidding on this vehicle and I did like the snipe method, which is I just watched the car, I stayed on until the auction hit, and then when the auction hit, I bid at the very last second. I think I bit, went on a bidding war from like 700 to 800. I ultimately won the car at $925. It's a little bit more than I wanted to pay for it, but still 925 for a car that runs under 100,000 miles is pretty hard to lose. So yeah, I won the car for 900 bucks. It wasn't much of a bidding war. There wasn't a ton of competition on it. Probably would have been if this was a Honda Civic or something a little bit easier to resell, but for whatever reason, people didn't want to touch the PT Cruiser and I was willing to take the risk on this one. So if you're wondering what kind of sites that people buy and flip cars from, the biggest one is probably Copart Auto Auctions, which is a big salvage website where you can buy cars that have been in accidents, but also they have a ton of donated cars, consignment cars, and dealer trade-ins and things like that, that ultimately just make their way to the platform. They have private auctions and public auctions that the public can bid on. Check out, there's also insurance auto auctions and a bunch of different websites where you can buy cars. In the impound space, there's Joyride Auto Auctions and a site called highbid.com. And there's also government surplus website and, and government websites as well. And tractor trailer auctions for things like Ritchie Brothers, which sometimes happen to have fleet trucks Ford F-150s and things like that you could buy and ultimately resell on the public market. So let's get back into the story. I won this PT Cruiser and I had 48 hours to pick it up. That was the terms and conditions of this auction. So what I did is I ultimately went on a rental car website. I think I went on Expedia or one of those and I found the cheapest possible rental car. And I booked a one-way ticket. At the time I was in Los Angeles and I went all the way to San Diego. The rental car cost me about $125 in gas 
to get from LA to San Diego. And the drive ultimately took me, I think two hours because I left super early in the morning. When I got there, I paid for the car. The process was very seamless and easy. And ultimately the tow truck driver that was there, he kind of helped me. He let me into the gate, helped me jumpstart the car. And I was super pumped when the car started. For whatever reason, it's always a super exciting moment when you buy a used car or a piece of junk and something like that and it actually starts and like the radio works. These are like the simplest things, but they really draw in a lot of excitement because you're not there stranded. I literally booked a rental car, had no idea how well this thing dro drove whatsoever. And uh, we jumped it and it happened to drive and I drove it right off the lot. So my one way ticket in a rental car was ultimately worth it. I dropped the rental car off at the closest rental car company and I Ubered that whatever it was, one mile to the, to the tow lot to pick up this vehicle. So once I picked up the car, I started just driving it and uh, I was ultimately headed all the way back to Northern California. The car drove pretty well. It definitely needed a bit of TLC, a little bit of like a, maybe an alignment, uh, just air in the tires and things like that. But the car drove all the way from SoCal to NorCal. So I don't recommend everybody do this, but I have a strong enough intuition from flipping and driving so many cars that I was able to kind of take a calculated guess on if this would make it home. All right, so the next thing I did was ultimately clean up and merchandise the car. I took inventory of what was needed on the car, what wasn't. Really all it needed was a gas cap, a hub cap that it was missing. It needed new license plates, registration, and a couple of little things here and there. So the main thing I had to do was register this car at the DMV. It was a pain in the ass. It was COVID time, I had to wear a mask, had to wait multiple lines but I paid somewhere around $350 to $400. I had to pay the tax, the transfer fee, and ultimately one or two years of expired registration to get this car back on the market. In addition to that, they trashed the handicap plates and gave me fresh plates. This was good and bad because I didn't have the original ones. I also wanted to keep the handicap so I could park in a handicap spot, but they gave me a new set of plates. With that, I then had to wait for the pink slip and the title in the mail for about one to two weeks, and then it came. While I was waiting for the title and I had all the paperwork done, I got a new gas cap on eBay. I had to get a new trunk button, and I actually had to like do a special fix because the Chrysler uh, trunk button is very prone to breaking. It's made out of this cheap plastic, and instead of actually fixing the OEM one, which was like $200, I actually wired in a like $7 switch which is a very common problem on this car, and the trunk then ended up working great. In addition to that, I changed the oil, I detailed the car, and I got a new hubcap. Other than that, I didn't put a ton of money into this car. The tires were decent, the car drove pretty straight, and it didn't need a ton of work. The worst part about probably having this PT Cruiser was that I had to look at it in my driveway. I'm not a fan of the aesthetics, it's bubbly, it's kind of made of plastic. It's not fun to drive. This was an automatic and not a manual. So there's pretty much no fun to it. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't want to be seen in it. I didn't want to see it in my driveway. And it just reminded me and kind of gave me PTSD. So I recommend if you're going to flip a car, you should probably flip a car you want to drive, not that you're like scared of being seen in or that you don't want to see in your driveway. That's really important. So long story short, I got the title for this car. I cleaned it up. I took amazing footage of the car, driving it around, testing the engine, this and that. Lots of photos. I put the car on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and everywhere I possibly could. And I got absolutely no interest for like two weeks. So I started to get scared. I started to be like, uh-oh, I bought the wrong car. The PT Cruiser is a piece of junk. I shouldn't have bought this. It's not high demand. Should have got a Honda Civic. Should have got a Toyota Corolla, something like that. So I lowered the price to ultimately about 3,800, 3,900, something like that. And I started to get a lot of bites. Ultimately, the first buyer that came ended up buying the vehicle. He test drove it. And uh, I think I knocked off two or three hundred dollars for him just for like gas, oil change, and some basic stuff, whatever he wanted to do. And so I ultimately sold the car for thirty six hundred dollars. This brought my net profit to nineteen hundred and twenty three dollars. So I'm going to show you here my calculator that I used to calculate the different expenses for buying the car. The vehicle was nine hundred twenty five dollars uh, all in, and I did have to pay some additional registration fees and tax as well as auction fees, the cost of my rental car, the cost of the Uber, the gas, the eBay fees, uh, the trunk button, a drill bit, gas cap, and all these little miscellaneous things that added up along the way. So I added that all up and I took it out of the sale price to calculate a net profit about $1,923 on this car. So all in all, the 2008 Chrysler PT Cruiser was a successful flip. And it was a successful flip because I followed 
three basic steps that I follow for flipping almost anything, but especially with cars. So if you notice throughout the video, I had some little tips and tricks and best practices in there, and I'll recap them here at the end for you, just in case you wanna try this yourself. So tip number one is you wanna buy a car at a good price. This is an obvious, obvious tip, but it is very important for you to make a profit. Most people get hung up in like the bidding dynamics where they find something they really like and they overpay for it. You're gonna wanna buy cars for 50% or less what they are selling for, hopefully even more, because then you have a much wider range of a profit margin and room for error in making a flip. You never wanna go underwater on a flip where you buy something for 3,000, spend 2,000 fixing it, and you're making like negative $2,000. It's just not worth your time, it's a waste of money. You wanna buy stuff on the cheap. So that is one of the main reasons I bought this PT Cruiser is just wasn't a lot of demand for it, it wasn't well merchandised, and I got a good deal. The second thing is you're gonna to wanna to minimize risk. So how do you minimize risk on a flip? Well, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the car runs. Did it have one owner? Does it have all four wheels? Like really simple stuff, but you wanna minimize as much risk as possible. Avoid stuff that doesn't have title, has a sketchy loan on it. You don't know anything about its history. It doesn't have any service records. Anything like this adds up to the risk and you could make a bigger reward on it, but if you don't entirely know what you're doing, it's best to reduce as much possible risk as humanly possible when buying a car. The third and last thing and best tip for flipping a car is you wanna maximize demand. The way you do this is you wanna pay all the registration fees for the car. You wanna make sure it has like two sets of keys that uh, there's no tax or anything due on the vehicle. There's no tickets, nothing. It has the plates and it is turnkey and ready to go. This is what I have found has helped me sell all cars. If you have a car and you're like transferring the title from the auction house's name to the buyer and you're just some sketchy middleman, buyers don't like that. They want a clean title car in hand, something they could give you cash and drive away with it and not have to worry about all the issues. The second most important part of this aspect of maximizing demand is you wanna put it on every website possible. Don't limit yourself to just Craigslist and like Facebook Marketplace, but put the dang thing on eBay and any other site, bring a trailer or any other like niche sites what, that you could find that might be able to maximize a reach for this car to be beyond your state and maybe even like nationally or globally as well. I've actually shipped cars to Europe or across the United States, and the buyers have paid that shipping fee through eBay or some kind of a brokerage service, and I didn't have to get involved. So that can be really good for specific niche cars, sports cars, and some off-road vehicles that people export to other countries. So that's it. Uh, let me know what you think about this video. This was a fun flip. It was a risky one. I'm never buying a PT Cruiser again, but I would consider it if I found a deal as good as that. Uh, I would not recommend buying a PT Cruiser for anyone. It is a cheap plastic car. I did not like it. I do not want to be seen in it ever again. I'm kind of embarrassed making this video, but I hope you all found some inspiration in it. And I just know that you can find trash and, and turn it into treasure in all the corners of the internet, all the corners of auction. There are opportunities still out there. So if you like this video, please comment and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. And let me know if you have any questions on flipping cars. See ya.